I want to share with you my truth. What is my story? How did I get here? How did Farhan Khawaja become Dr. Farhan Khawaja and then Doc Testosterone and here telling you all about it? So just like any other immigrant, um, you know, I came to Dallas from Pakistan. I'm a Pakistani. I was born in Karachi, Pakistan to, you know, Muslim family, super conservative, very, very hardcore religious culture, relatives, uh, you know, all doing what society has planned for them. And I was on that track too. I did my PhD in neuroscience, my master's in neuroscience. My undergrad was in computer science and engineering. And I studied at some of the best universities in the world. And I was quite happy actually during that time. You know, growing up as a kid, I was a super duper science nerd. My relatives would brag to their friends about how good I was at math and, and how I could uh, memorize the table all the way to 12 as just a little boy. And, uh, you know, I became this model kid in my, in my mosque, or, you know, we call it a Jamaat Khana. This is a, like a religious prayer place. I was the model kid. All the parents wanted their kids to be like me. I had the best grades in the school. I uh, was just always studying, praying, you know, went to the mosque, or, you know, Jamaat Khana every day. Um, I was doing community service. Just, just, I was just a really good kid. But towards the end of my PhD, I realized that the experiences that I wanted to get in life, you know, like with my masculine energy, there was something missing. There was something going on because I was becoming aware of who I was. You know, it's like, I'm a fucking doctor and I don't love myself. Like I don't have high self-esteem. I'm afraid to talk to girls. I have very low confidence. I'm masturbating to porn every day since I was 12. I wasn't allowed to sleep over people's houses. I wasn't allowed to go to camps. I wasn't allowed to make friends outside of my close-knit religious community. But as I was learning about the suffering that I was undergoing at the time, I wanted to make a drastic change. So seven days after my PhD, I moved to Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, I became a pickup artist. I joined a community of pickup artists who taught me improv. These one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions where I would go to a club or a bar or a grocery store or the Las Vegas street or casino and approach girls. And at that time, my confidence was so low. I had never had sex before. I had never kissed a girl before. So uh, when I published my first paper, this was a really good paper in the Journal of Neuroscience. I didn't really feel that much better. Like I still felt like shit. Now that publishing that paper didn't allow me to go have confidence with a girl or have amazing erections or libido and perform in bed. I'd never done that before. I had no idea even how to do it. I was a fat kid, skinny fat, which is even worse. I didn't know how to weight lift. You know, it, my hair was shitty. I didn't know how to dress. I, my fashion was dumb. I actually, I remember in my undergrad, my, my first university degree, I was afraid to go to the gym because I didn't want the girl I married to like me for my body. Anyway, let me get to the next step in the story. So in Vegas, one thing I realized is that my body sucked. I was not able to perform in bed. I did not have good sexuality, masculinity. There was something missing. I needed to reclaim my masculinity. So I did what any kid who wants to learn about weightlifting would do. I moved to a gym. For eight months in Florida, I moved to this gym, which is one of the best gyms in the world. And I trained with the top, top fitness trainers in the world. I learned strength training, how to deadlift, how to squat, how to bench press, how to pull up, how to lunge, how to work on my booty, how to work on my abs, how to work on my biceps. I developed this curiosity, this inner 
energy, this inner desire to learn everything I can about my body, about breathing, about bioenergetics, about meditation, about muscular imbalances. I went to chiropractors. I went to neurosomatic therapist. I went to neuromuscular therapist. I did uh, Tai Chi, Qigong with uh, the, the boss's brother, actually. He did private classes every week with me. I did Reiki. I did yoga. You name it, I did it. And a lot of those experts, a lot of those people that I was around, my mentors, they taught me the value of practicality. They taught me the value of applying knowledge. They taught me the value of the difference between theory and practice. So that was the second part of the story. The third part is when I became Doc Testosterone. I wanted to share this knowledge with everyone about nutrition, about diet, exercise, about sleep, about intermittent fasting, calories, meditation, about muscular imbalances, about breathing, about mental health, how to transform your mind, how to transform your life from the inside out, how to get that core confidence. So I started this YouTube channel and I started selling eBooks and, and video courses and I developed this entire tribe and I've had that for the last three years. But I will admit one thing. Look, this is the thing. The ability for me to prove my sexual performance and my erection quality, my libido to myself, it was manifested by this girl, with this girl. So now I am 100% confident that everything that I've done, every single step that I made, every single experience that I had to transform my mind and my body worked. That's the cool thing.